My name is Doug Bennett. I'm the publisher of Masthead Magazine and Design Edge Canada. So I want to welcome you all here today. This is sort of the first time we've done a joint Masthead Design Edge and an Adobe uh, session. I hope that you will leave inspired and informed. The first session was fascinating, and uh, I learned a lot, quite a, quite a bit, actually. I want to thank Adobe for hosting this. I think this is a great event. Now that I've seen it all the way through, I, I want you to know you're in for <coughs> some, some real um, treats. But it, you know, Graydon Carter was there, and he was talking about all the great images that, that she'd shot for Vanity Fair. Um, Jan Winner was there talking about how she got on a bus, and followed Hunter Thompson around for two weeks and how she spent a, a month with Yoko and John Lennon, you know, and, and it was just, you kind of look at the high fidelity world of, of paper publishing and you think, you guys are going to throw that all away and go make a digital product? And, and when we were having our conversation early, earlier today, we, the question was, well, how do you guys all feel about your digital replica? You know, or how do you feel about digital replicas? And everyone on the panel, besides me, basically talked about their website. And, and I think it's really important to understand that what I'm talking about is, is holding on to something that I think is very dear to most of us in this room, which is, which is really a high fidelity magazine, something that, that's designed individually. Every page is designed. It's not HTML text. It's not, it's not a formula. It's, it's basically a magazine that, that is created by editors and art directors, and it's sold by um, publishers. Basically, it involves all the people in our community that, that we've always worked with. And, it, and it's, not, it's not this hybrid. Uh, I mean, it is a hybrid because it basically doesn't involve paper. But to me, this, this is not a conversation about, about do you like your website versus your, your magazine. It's a question of, of what is the magazine of the future. And, and in my mind, the magazine of the future is probably not going to be associated with paper. Um, but the important thing is, is that it's very important for us to protect our brands, make our brands, make them as special as they've always been, um, and, and somehow go into the digital age with grace. You know? and, and the idea that, that, that I kind of want you all to have in your mind is that if you wait until, let's say, the digital reader is there, you know, let's say it's something like this, I, I think it may be too late. I mean, if, if I want circulation is, um, is, is basically key to our, to our, to our industry. But um, you know, circulation is something that costs a lot of money. You know, it costs a lot of money in paper. It costs a lot of money online. Um, Anne Moore at, at Time Inc. said that she believes that all of her brands will be around in the future, but she's not necessarily sure that each one's going to be around as a magazine. And uh, Google basically is, in many ways, considered the enemy of our industry because because if you only are providing information and you're not providing any entertainment you, in essence, can't possibly um, retain anybody. You know, if, because Google can get most people exact information very quickly. So, so we somehow need to like, bridge the gap of, of what information, of, of entertainment. And I do believe that there's still a model out there. It's like, you know, let's say you're into fly fishing. It's like you may want that experience where you, gen you leaf through a magazine, whether it's digital or paper, that, that I believe will survive this, this um, economy or shakedown. Um, because it's very different than what Google does, which gives you very specific information based on a very specific request. And, and what we have to do is make sure that our world of creating dynamic, interesting, viable environments for specifically targeted audience is still, is that me? Um, still, still resonates. Um, your cover is really your celebrity. And, and you need to preserve it. And in living, living you know, past the Annie Leibovitz years or, or even through them still, you know, it's like we need to make sure that, that we create products that, that hold that kind of respect. Um, this is a, a, a solution that Esquire did that I think is very clever, um, where, where they're obviously trying to wrestle the same things everybody else is, which is basically how do you, how do you make something more interesting uh -huh. and put it on your cover. And so here it's George Clooney, Justin Timberlake, and Obama. So then it, it's five medical myths you need to challenge now. And, and, and then when you go over to the page over here, basically it, it, here's the actual quiz. Um, advertising is, is um, as, as I mentioned earlier, I, advertising age is over, or at least it's over right now. Um, I forget how much advertising fell off in the first quarter in magazines in general. I believe it was 24%. And so I think as we go online and we start thinking about digital products that may potentially work you know, for our advertisers, because you know, we are publishers. We do create a product. We create a super highway of all these people coming through, enjoying our product, and then we sell it to the advertisers. That's the game. That's the game we're in. And if, if, if they go to a website and the advertising isn't doing anything, 
then these advertisers are going to need a place to go. And so, so I, don't, I don't believe they're gone. I just believe they're kind of hibernating. Because the other part about this is that the advertisers on their own can create a similar environment. You know, so, so in this case, it, it's a spread so that, so that you're, not, you're not trying to do that thing where you create the really interesting editorial and they buy the single page opposite. But I guarantee you, if this advertising wasn't rich media or it wasn't something that kept the reader there, um, then that reader's gone. We, so we build everything in um, InDesign and we export it as PDFs and then we, we animate it in Flash and then we bring it back together. I mean, the beauty of, the beauty of what we, we build is that by using InDesign as, as a product, um, we're not retraining editors how to think. We're not retraining design people how to work. You know, that we're using the tools that we're already familiar with. The, we're, just, we're just, instead of going to pre-press, we go to a flash designer. As sort of ambassador of the image and brand of Flare, it is my responsibility to make sure that the website represents the print version. Um, so obviously logos, typesetting, colors, all of those things tie in with the magazine. But at the same time, I think it's really important not to just take the content of the magazine and throw it on the web. So there are extra features, behind the scenes videos, um, outs from some of our shoots that perhaps didn't make it into the magazine, go online. Um, it's, you know, it is quite a different vehicle. So there is, you know, some interaction with the web, but at the same time there's a web editor, uh, a web designer, and they have some of their own sort of ideas of what they want to do as well. When we design for print, there's, you know, there's strict deadlines, there's uh, a press that's waiting, there's images that have to be done, and there's a delivery date. With the web, it's like this long process where we can constantly change. And I mean, the only thing is getting it live, but even that, after that, it changes. So it, it's hard to find closure with some of it. And um, if you're an outside studio working for a client, um, that can get a bit frustrating. If it's your website, it's great. So I designed this thing perfectly. It looked beautiful. She loved it. She sent it to the program, and she sent it back to me yesterday. It looks like nothing like what I gave her. I gave a Helvetica, it's in some, it's another font, the spaces were different, and this and is then there's the creative director. I think the person, you could have a creative director rather than an art director that oversees, that comes out of print, that maybe has a little more uh, design savvy that can direct as a creative director. But definitely things don't seem to translate very well on the web. Uh, Beyond just the fonts we find these days is the size of the monitor, how big someone has their window pulled mm -hmm. open, so how does the whole website change and move within that. The whole grid all of a sudden is, is a flexible one where we're used to some very rigid, tight grid systems that are based on a lot of different calculations and all of a sudden that's opening and closing and how do you deal with that. Um, and then, I mean, when you deal with a magazine, you're looking, I mean, people open it in the middle, they flip to the back, they flip to the front, and when you hit a website, you're entering into it, so totally different. You're not thinking, when we design for print, we're considering the pacing, the rhythm of the images, the, the headlines, and all of the fonts, how they all come into play. And when you go to a website, it's just such a totally different entry, and how you navigate throughout that, it's a very different rhythm. I, I'm just wondering what you think of, of um, Campion's magazine, which seems to try to address a lot of these issues with a, with a, a digital magazine, but it's not a website. I, th I thought it was incredible, actually. I thought it was, um, you know, it, it probably quite expensive, <laughs> <laughs> but really, um, really beautiful, easy to navigate. Definitely the reader experience is much improved, I think, from just visiting a regular website or magazine version online. The big thing we're, we're seeing now is that um, I think we're trying to make it a, a good distinction between uh, what's on the website, what's in the printed version, and what's going to be on the digital version. Um, and they, what we're trying to do is expand what's in the printed version onto the digital version and using the web for its strengths of with video and animation and all those and sound and things like that uh, where print is uh, a little weaker in. Um, and as far as the website goes, uh, trying to use that to its strengths as well as you know the immediacy and, and more news kind of information. Uh, so instead of having the same content repeated three times or two times, uh, try to make it unique to a print magazine. The print version has unique elements to it, and also the digital publication has unique elements to it as well. I think they're seeing that um, the print versions are uh, dwindling as far as sales go, and you know, copies, and there's more traffic to their websites. Um, so that's a way to uh, stay in front of their readers 
online. Um, thanks, everybody, and uh, thanks to our panelists. Um,